Hey everyone, welcome to the Ice House webinar. I am Bryce Stewart, the community manager here at the Ice House, and we are doing our product webinar today based on our workshop called Knowing Your Numbers. It has had incredible reviews. I've heard so many good things. And so it's quite an honor to be chatting with the facilitator, Matt Bellingham today, about the program, doing a bit of a deep dive, what you can expect, and getting to know Matt a little bit better as well. So welcome, Matt, to the webinar. Hi, Brian. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm excited to be part of this. This is a first time experience for me on a webinar. So, um, just, you know, be gentle, be kind to me. <laughs> Hopefully it'll go well. Even more of, a, of an honour then to uh, guide you through your first webinar, um, but I know you've done many, many presentations before um, and, and you're a pro really. So let's do it. Let's jump into it. Eh? So the first question is, tell us a bit about yourself, Matt. What has your career journey looked like and what do you do now? Um, yeah, well, my, my career has been um, what probably the uh, current generation would say is incredibly boring because I've done one thing from university and still doing it now at age 51. So, um, but interestingly enough, at school, I was always going to be a pilot and then I um, managed to fail the eye test. So I decided what's kind of similar to that and ended up in accountant, which is a little bit <laughs> Um, but the, uh, pretty early on in my accounting journey, uh, so I came out of university in um, 1991 and we were thick, deep into a recession um, post the 87 sort of worldwide crash mm -hmm. and there were no jobs around and, and everything was really tricky. So very, you know, you could say it's probably 180 degree polar opposite to, to the situation we are today. Mm -hmm. And as an accountant, I, I, um, I was lucky enough to land a job in a really small little firm, but that small little firm was actually around, its whole ethos was less about doing tax returns and, and working out um, you know, how much tax you had to pay at the end of the year and more about actually helping businesses through some really tough times. So right from the beginning of my career, it was less around counting the beans and more, more about using data and information to um, help people and help businesses. And so my, my, my career ended up, yeah, right from the beginning around adopting innovation and technology and software programs pretty early on, um, process management through then to um, um, improvement opportunities, which then led me through into strategy and planning business turnaround work. Um, and then that led me into governance and then um, more laterally in my career, it's really been towards the back end of the journeys for some of my clients. It's been around transactions. So I've spent a huge amount of time in mergers and acquisitions and sale and divestment. And uh, it's that knowledge that um, has really built the Know Your Numbers course. And that's what I try to bring to life over a two day experience with, with the crew and license. Very cool. Yeah, very awesome. Yeah, cool to hear your ex experience is very broad. And like you said, um, you you know, you've more than more than just the numbers, you've got a real passion for that business advisory, you know, supporting them um, through the highs and lows. Um, so that I like that. That's cool. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I honestly, I think I've got the best job in the world. Um, cool. and, and it's funny that I fell into it, you know, otherwise I'd probably be still flying planes around the place. Yeah. But um, but yeah, it's the best job in the world. I, I get to work with so many different, mid, and I, I specialize just in the mid market. So mm. owner, manager, owner, yeah. operator, closely yeah. private companies, that's it. Really? And I, I get to work with so many passionate people in so many different industries and, mm. and go on them, go on the journey with them all the way through from, from sort of relatively small businesses um, right up to right up to large mid market and, and be on that that journey right through the business life cycle. It's fantastic. It's really mm. cool. Yeah, that's so exciting. I love that. Um, yeah, cool. Great foundation to hear, you know, what you do and what your career experiences look like. Uh, specifically now looking at the Knowing Your Numbers workshop, what is Knowing Your Numbers? Well, you know, I'm an accountant at heart still, right? So I still love, I still love P&Ls and balance sheets. So, so we do a little bit of that, but most people are pretty familiar with a PL. and l They kind of get the idea of, you got some sales at the top and then you minus a whole lot of stuff off and hopefully that it's not a negative number at the bottom and yeah. that's good. So we, we do a little bit around unpacking the P&L, but we spend a bit more time in the balance sheet um, because 
it's like it's a bit of a mystery, right? No one really fully understands the balance sheet. So my job is to break both of those two pieces of financial um, data and information. It's a wealth of information in there. My, my job with the with the participants is to break that down into plain English so everyone understands what's the point, what information is in there. If I knew these things, then how could that impact on my decision making in order to make my business better? And um, mm. so that's the first point. Yeah. But the, 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 from there, we kind of lead into that. That's only one sort of source of numbers. Like everything in our business is measured in numbers. So there's financial, which is those primarily those two um, those two documents. But there's numbers everywhere, which we call the non-financial indicators as well. So we spend a lot of time throughout the course, um, integrating the non-financial KPIs with the financial KPIs and bringing that together to get a really holistic view of data and then analyzing those so that we can make better decisions. And, and that's the whole point of the course. That's very, very cool. Yeah, I love that. And um, yeah, I've heard incredible reviews around how you have a knack for turning hard concepts into easy to digest, easy to understand, plain English, like you said, uh, concepts. And I think that's so important, especially for a business owner that's got so much going on. Um, this may not come as naturally to them. They need it straight. They need it in plain English. So yeah, that's really cool to hear you. you you're able to do that. Um, the next question we have is who is knowing your numbers for what type of business owner um so it's it's for business owners and it's for that probably that next level below business owners too if you've got so kind of like a senior leadership team yeah um in terms of the size businesses um it's really it, it, it's really generic to be honest i know this is going to sound a bit kind of naff, but um, it's actually for any size businesses. I've had people um, who are in startup phase cool. with less than $100,000 turnover do the two-day course and tell me it's the best thing they've ever done. Mm -hmm. And I've had um, really high-level CFOs who've got all of the financial training in the world in charge of companies from a financial perspective of hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars of turnover mm -hmm. do the course and get different things out of it but come back and tell me, hey, I just learned a whole new way to communicate with my CEO or my board or the way you talk about these things, it was awesome. So um, yeah, it's really, um, who is it for? It's for anybody who inside their role in the company that, work for, that they work for participates in decision-making and yeah. that's probably the best way I can lay it out. Yeah, that's a great answer. Yeah, got to be making those decisions around finances and um, yeah, for sure, that's awesome. You kind of unpacked it before, but anything extra to add to what is covered specifically over the course? Yeah, there's, there's a whole lot more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, think yeah. I, I think what the, my, my main goal is to go, where, do all, where does all the data come from? Um, how can we package that data so that it's useful, it's understandable, mm -hmm. um, that everybody in the organization has an access to the appropriate level of data and then more importantly knows what to do with it. And, and that's kind of the, the thing. Um, specifically, we look at how to integrate financial data into your planning cycle, um, making sure that, I guess, making sure that, um, and, and look, I'm a beanie, so I'm allowed to talk about bean counters, but quite often bean counters think that they drive business strategy. So we'll drive business strategy from a budget, and, and my view is the opposite of that. It's, you know, you've got to drive your strategy or your strategic planning first, and then you move into kind of the execution or implementation planning stages. And then based on those two sets of plans, you move into your financial planning, which proves that it's a good idea. So um, I guess we, we start off with what does the planning cycle look like? How does that fit into um, business strategy, governance, and then the finance function? And how can we bring through, through having data-driven decision-making, how, how can we bring life to that whole planning? Um, so that's where we start and then we then um, move through concepts between profitability, margin um, and then finish off with cash because without cash you know, this doesn't exist yeah. and we do that through a series of um, exercises and case studies. I do a couple of little quizzes on the way through to 
liven things up a bit um, and and a lot of group work to share real life experiences but yeah that's essentially it mm, yeah essentially it uh, that's a lot for two day <laughs> workshop <laughs> which is yeah, so cool it, it is but it like goes yeah, it, it's, um, it is a lot, but um, we've got plenty of time. That's the beauty of having a two-day workshop. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, as I said before, I have people with zero financial um, knowledge coming into this into this course, and they're really nervous. They kind of think that it's all going to go over their head, but by the end of it, it's not the case. They, they really have a newfound or sometimes first-time love for numbers and um, and yeah, I, I think the way the material is structured and the way we run the facilitation of the workshop, there's stuff in there for everybody. So it's nothing to be scared about. Yeah, I love saying that because yeah, numbers can be scary for some, and um, yeah. and yeah, I think it's really nice to be able to just go. Actually, everyone doesn't matter your skill set or or yeah. your you know natural talent in in uh, numbers. Come along and and learn something and bounce you know, between your peers as well, which is, which is very uh, real life based. Yeah. I like it. Um, kind of a nice transition into this one. Why do you think owners and leaders can get nervous or tune out of their finances? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And I'm probably going to be unpopular for my answer here, but go for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty unpopular anyway. Um, I think it's because of my profession. I think it's because of the accountants. Ah. So um, accountants for you know, hundreds of years have made things as complicated as possible. Um, and maybe it's because it makes themselves feel smart or maybe it makes them feel more important or you know, the real cynical person would say maybe it allows us to charge more, higher charge our rates. Um, I, I think we've made a, an, an industry out of making things complicated. Wow. And therefore, unless you are trained and or you've, you, you've sort of been through an extensive level of training, um, it becomes really scary, and it and it hundred percent does. Now, um, my background is 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 around making things simple. Um, so, I think that owners and leaders and managers easily can 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 be nervous about financial statements and 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 money and decisions around money. But if we make it simple, then they can get confidence to pick up those um those tools like even tools like break even analysis and be able to apply it straight away into their business and and, and instantly make a difference so yeah that's what I'm trying to. i love that answer thanks for your honesty and <laughs> it makes me go oh yeah maybe it is <laughs> yeah you know, a few years ago they made me a fellow of chartered accountants Australia, New Zealand. So I hope I don't get that revoked for that answer. <laughs> no, I think uh, we, yeah, we love the, we love the realness here. So yeah, it's appreciated. Um, next question I have is: What is the importance or benefits of owners and leaders having a clear understanding of their finances? Um, I think the, the the importance cannot be understated. Uh, it's it's etched in law, it's etched in company law, um, and it's a responsibility as a director yeah. and senior management and potentially a dean director. So, um, you know, you, you get your numbers wrong and you're at danger of not being able to pass a thing called the solvency test in the Companies Act. And, um, you know, that, that's a real problem. That's like a do not pass go, do not, do not collect $200, you know, go directly to jail problem. So the importance is if you're not across the data and the numbers and you're part of the, you're participating, you've got, you've got access to financial information, and you're participating in decision-making, which then leads to, um, leads to a solvency issue with the company, you, you really want to make sure all your, your assets are in trust, basically. Um, the benefits though, uh, by understanding that and understanding the downstream impacts of decisions that we make from a financial perspective and a balance sheet perspective, we can be really confident in the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. we, we can be confident that even if the, the idea turns sour, it's not going to have a long-term impact on our business. And um, so I, I just think you can't understate the importance and the upside of, of having facts and data to make decisions as opposed to gut feel 
Mm, yeah, no, that's so important to mention. Um, yeah, many, many benefits and even just peace of mind in that case, right? Of just going, totally. okay, I have an understanding. I know I'm doing the right thing. I can get some extra support from my accountant, my advisor, um, but at least, you know, I can sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, next question I have is what is the best first step an owner or a leader can make to get a better understanding of their finances? Do, do you mean apart from coming on our course? Exactly. The yeah, first step is obviously that. coming on our course. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> that's the, clear. <laughs> the, 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 the second step is, um, is, is hopefully what we talked about earlier, by getting the confidence mm -hmm. to get more involved in, yeah. in the numbers and demanding from your finance teams, whether that's internal or, internal or externally um, outsourced, that the, we're, we're looking at the information all of the time that it's simplified down to the main things that we need to be concerned about, not the you know, 200 pages of financial data um, and, and, and integrating finance into our our day-to-day -day decision making, and but really importantly into our big strategic steps. Um, I, I just think that's crucial. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Just saying, yeah, just saying, hey, guys, really wanting to be part of this and um, having my eyes over it and being in the loop. Yeah, very cool. I like that one. Um, sort of similar, but what is a top tip that you have for owners leaders when it comes to their finances? Just a general tip for them. Yeah, my top tip is gain a piece of knowledge. Um, you would be shocked really at the number of um, quite significant companies where the leaders or the owners or, or both if it's the same person um, have very little financial skill and they essentially delegate it yeah. um, and because of that they lose control so um, you don't need to be an accountant with a BCom but what you can't do is abdicate and just have just go hey I thought someone else was taking care of it and I've had to be involved in some really unpleasant situations where that's been the case. So just stay on top of them. Yeah, yeah, no, really great tip, Matt, for sure. Very important. Cool. Um, how can people get in touch and sign up for the next workshops? I can probably speak to this one. Yeah, a you can bit. do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but people can go to our website, um, the ISAS.co.nz, um, and um, just jump on and um, we have a page about our Knowing Our Numbers workshop and so you can sort of register interest there. I'll put our link into the caption of this webinar so it's really easy for you guys. Um, but we actually have our last Knowing Your Numbers workshop for the year um, on the 29th of November uh, in Auckland. So we're looking, looking forward to that and our dates for 2023 will come out shortly. So keep your eyes peeled. There'll be some great ones across 2023, across the whole of New Zealand. Zealand, um, one in October, um, just gone, um, happened in Christchurch. And so, uh, yeah, we make sure that they happen across New Zealand so that we can target, you know, business owners and leaders uh, in the regions as well. Um, so, yeah, it's it's great. And, um, you know, if you are in touch with your customer growth partner, then um, they're also a great person just to just to say, hey, I'd love to go on the Knowing Your Numbers course. Um, how, do, how can I do that? We've had it's, I think workshops is an interesting one because it's either the first touch point with the Ice House or it's something that they realize through our owner manager program or leadership development program that it's an element of the business that they need to get a little bit more clued up on. Um, so it sort of can come from two ways, which is quite cool because you have a real mix of people in the room, like you said, Matt, startups, um, you know, owner managers of small, medium-sized businesses, et cetera. So um, that's it there, but I'll make sure it's really clear in the copy. So if you're wondering, how can I get in touch? Just click on the link and... Um, go from there i think that sums it up is that right matt yeah it sounds perfect Matt. Jack. awesome well matt thank you so much for being on the webinar and just unpacking on your numbers not only did you talk about what the actual two-day workshop is like um but just gave some really cool like top tips for for business owners that need to you know what they need to think about when it comes to their numbers and their finances so appreciate it you're a wealth of knowledge and i know you're busy so thanks for jumping on the webinar today Thanks so much for having me. And um, wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. So that's good news. That's a win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>